In this video, I'm gonna share with you a presentation I did for BreakthroughBroker.com where I covered how to dominate a marketplace, meaning get 20% or more in a geographic territory. So there's four things I covered in this session. Number one is, what are the numbers that I'm looking for in a geographic territory? Number two, how to set big goals and what are the goals that make the most sense? Number three, my core principles in marketing and lead gen. And then number four, I cover every single tactic and every single action we can do in a geographic territory to get more listings and more buyers and make more money. I did go over a document and so just so you know down below I'm going to share the link to that document so jump down there get that document if you like this content. All right enjoy. So the problem that I see and the promise of this presentation was I said turnover rate is useless to me turnover rate I don't care about. What I started to do was I looked at what's the total number of homes in this geographic territory? Great. Then I noticed that if I met with the title rep today and they talked about turnover rate last year, well, gosh, in 2022, what was the turnover rate in most marketplaces? It was actually really low. And then in 2021, it was really high. And then in 2020, maybe it was a little medium. And then maybe in 2019, maybe it was down a little bit. 2018, maybe up. 2017, probably peaked. So, okay, well, we need to get the average over a longer period of time so that you and I can actually see what's a conservative number of sales per year. Then I want to look at, hey, there's two transactions per one sale. So a lot of people just talk, well, there's just not enough sales. Well, if there's 10 sales, that means there's 20 clients. That means there's 20 commission checks. Okay. So I want to be clear about that. And then I want to take the total volume and then I want to multiply the total sales volume by 0.05, 5%. And when I'm looking at that number with you and I'm going, okay. So I had a, an example of this, one of the geographic farms that I was, that I screwed up by the way, personally messed up, right. Is there was 1100 homes. The average sales price was a million bucks. There was 40 sales for the year. That means there was 80 clients, buyer and seller, and 40 times a, a million. We all know that number, 40 million. And so 40 million times 0 0.025, well, that's a million dollars GCI. But wait a minute, there's two sides. So a million times 5%, oh, that's $2 million. And this is how I want you guys to be reflecting on this. There was $2 million paid to real estate agents last year in that neighborhood that I lived in. Ooh, that's painful. It's painful and, and exciting all at the same time. So turnover rate is like, it's kind of a useless number to me. This, my friends, really helps me to advise my clients powerfully. All right. I don't want to spend too much time here, but we do need to establish what your financial goals are and have better clarity around those numbers. So this is way too detailed for most people, but this is really everything that we would want to know if you were really, like if you were working for a Fortune 500 and you were a like, pharmaceutical company and you were a sales rep and you had a geographic territory that you were responsible for, the Fortune 500 company, these numbers would just be automatically in your plan. And so my friends, I just want to invite you into, you know, let's level up our game as pro salespeople and let's be more clear about the numbers and the details. So a couple of things I just want to highlight in here is my goal is really, I want to get 20% or greater of the total commissions paid. That is the main goal. So my friends, you know, yeah, I want to get some listings. That's great. Yeah, I want to get some buyer sales. That's great. Yeah, I want to have a percentage of those sales. But I don't know about you guys. I want the money, right? So I want to see your, your the total number of sales between buyers and sellers. And I want to see the total commissions earned. And I want you to get a percentage of that. So let's have some fun with these numbers so that we can stay inspired and, and, and set forth our, our strong goals. The last thing I just want to highlight here, because we don't want to spend too much time, is a lot of uh, my clients and friends actually have a lot of people already in their databases, but they're not tagged and associated with being in the farm. And so one of the goals is to meet the people we have not met yet in our farm and then add them into the database. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but we should really have a goal for, hey, I've got you know 150 people in my database in right now of the total 1,000 people in the geographic farm. And I want to just be mindful that our goal is to increase that 
every single year, meet more and more people in the farm, and then move them from a little, the most expensive marketing, which is physical marketing, and move them to a lower cost digital marketing. So that's the reason why I think this is so important for us. All right, well, let's get to where everybody wants to go, which is really where we're talking about uh, lead gen and marketing. Before I go into all of the options for you guys, and again, I'm going to share this document with all of you. You'll have an opportunity to walk through this step by step with you guys today. You know, Eric was gracious to have me here so we can just go through this at, at the high level. Here's some core principles. Again, remember when I said, hey, I've studied everything that doesn't work and I've and I looked at everything that did work and I tried to figure out, okay, what's the common denominators here? So the number one thing when I bring up to a new coaching client, I say, hey, let's talk about geographic farm. The very first thing that comes to mind is number one is they just think about direct mail and that's it. Everybody associates farming with mail. That's not the case. Number two, everybody also just associates geographic farming with only the listing side, which means that we're leaving 50% of the market on the table, right? Number three, is of course, I get lots of pushback from clients and they're like, but Patrick, you don't understand the culture and the demographics of my community. And I said, I don't need to, I need you to, because that is going to be the ticket and the secret ingredient to how we're going to approach them, right? Number four, I think is where we really have to spend some time, not on this session, but for yourself, which is, well, what are you good at? What are your resources? What are some of the tools and the skills that you have and then the big question that I'm always asking is, well, what are you willing to do and what are you not willing to do? Because for a simple example of that is a lot of people will say to me, well, I don't want to do spend all the money on the direct mail and I don't want to do door knocking. I'm like, fine. If you're not willing to, if you don't have the budget right now, <clears throat> that's okay. And if you're not willing to do door knocking, that's perfectly okay too. But then it's, well, what skills and resources do you have and how could we leverage those at first to get going? Okay. Number five is really there are immediate sources of business that we should go after. So a lot of my clients and friends will say, well, but Patrick, it's going to take 18 months. You know, Eric, if I run this, you know, breakthrough broker, geographic farm, you know, direct mail plan, it's going to take, you know, 12 months before I get anything. Well, why aren't we just going into your, into the farm and go into the data and look at, you know, expired cancels withdrawn over the last five years. Let's maybe approach some of the absentee owners, the non-owner occupied. We always get these for rent by owners and they pop up all the time. And so we can communicate with them. And then of course, if there is a for sale by owner, that's also an opportunity at an immediate source of business. So my friends, there are ways that you can just go ahead and try and create immediate listing opportunities directly. We just seem to forget that those existed when we're talking about geographic farm. Okay, good. Let's go to the next number six. We do need to you know talk a lot about budget, right? You know, you guys are all you know, clients and friends of Breakthrough Brokers. So there's a lot of resources there for you guys to create marketing campaigns into your geographic farm. But I just want to remind you that there are what's called sweat equity. There's free things to do that just cost you your time. Then there's low cost things. And then there's the most expensive stuff to do. And we just want to really be mindful of what those are. I'm going to review all of them today so that you can then create the best plan for yourself moving forward. Hot topic right now is number seven for all my coaching clients. I'm basically asking everybody, and I'll, I'll ask this of all of you today, which is, would you please construct an offer to a homeowner that is a selling consultation? I'm using those two words very specifically, selling consultation. Okay. I don't think that we are doing a great job in our marketing by inviting someone who's earlier into the process of selling. We're not inviting them to have a meeting with us to discuss, you know, what are their options to prepare their home? What are the cost benefit analysis of all those different options, right? We're not discussing, we're not getting enough referrals to the next market, meaning, hey, I would be willing to introduce you to an amazing agent in the next marketplace that you're moving to. Right. I, and maybe I should introduce you to one of my lenders since you're going to be selling and buying the next property. And let's get that started. Hey, let's talk about the cost. Let's talk about conservative net. Let's discuss really the timing. Uh, you know, how long does it take to get a home marketed or prepared? Then how long on the market in best, case, best and worst case scenario? And then how long does it under contract? And how does that work? And so I can help you create a plan for the sale of your home. Again, I don't think that we're doing a great job of presenting our offer to the selling consultation. So we got lots of work to do there, but let's go to number eight, which is the secret ingredients. So what is the secret ingredient to the lowest cost and the highest performing geographic farm? 
Secret ingredient right there, you can see it, my friends, is relationship capital. Positive engagements with the owners who appreciate you and thank you. They see you as a contributor to the community, not just a realtor. We're going to break that down into in the next section here. But my friends, that is literally the game. If we can accomplish that, then you win big. I have a, a, a great friend. She's in a mastermind of mine. She's a Tom Ferry coaching client. It's the uh, Jen and Jeff Tackney. And I've observed them. And they said to me one time, we were talking about this topic and they said, so they're like, that's so funny. I was on, we were on a listing appointment last night and the wife says to the husband, yeah, or, you know, to Jen and uh, Jen and Jeff, they said, yeah, we were just going to hire the aunt to sell the home. But my husband said it would be a slap in the face to the Tacneys to do that. I was like, oh my gosh. All of us agents are going, how do we um, get such a deep level of loyalty and commitment from the community back to us? This couple decided not to list with their aunt because they thought that it would be rude to the Jen and Jeff Tackney. That, my friends, is relationship capital. Okay. So next secret ingredient, number two, Dave Robles, one of my great buddies in LA, he said his mindset is to treat everybody in the farm as if they were his sphere of influence. And when he does that, what he's learned is that the people in the farm actually refer him to additional business outside of the farm. I've seen this, my friends, with my father-in-law, Kai. He has this amazing farm that uh, my wife and I kind of helped him. You know, he moved into this great community, little niche community out in Escondido. And we did all kinds of, you know, we did the garage sales. We did all kinds of events. We did the food and we did all the things. And, you know, with Kai, he would get referrals from people in the farm and they never did a transaction with him and they would introduce him to opportunities. So his total addressable market in the farm, meaning the total number of sales in a small niche, 350 home community was not very high, but he actually did two and three transactions each year from referrals. So my friends, there's a lot more opportunity to this if we play the game right. Obviously, those two things are mindset, and let's jump into where everybody wants to go. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with really the instructions here. So when you guys come back to this document and you're looking at it yourself, you'll you'll see everything. I'm gonna load up more resources onto this document for you guys before the end of the day. Okay, but step number three is I said review all your options below. So we're gonna go through every single option quickly, and then I want you guys to pick. What are the two to five items that you believe make the most sense for your skills, your tools, your budgets, and the culture and the demographic of your community? So my friends, let's dive in. Let's have some fun. So obviously I used to, step number one, I used to start with direct mail and I completely changed that. I made that the last thing on my list. So the first thing on my list is community events. And what I find, and I, I want to make an interesting point here, the reason why this document is so important for everybody is I've noticed as I've given all the assignment, uh, Eric, you can, you can appreciate this, as I've, as, as I've asking my clients to do twice as much marketing and lead generation in 2023, what happens is we forget. We forget all of the best tactics, the best strategies, the things that we already predetermined were successful things for ourselves. So I just want to re-remind you that this document is more of a memory jogger. I need you guys to just use this to remind yourself, oh yeah, I've got all those options. Oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's what this document is here for, my friends. So <laughs> I broke down events into a couple different categories. First is utility, right? Just creating a simple thank you. So the community garage sale I found at first, guys, please know, I was so embarrassed to set up a garage sale. I just, you know, I'll tell you guys up front. And then when I did it and I was like, so ugh, this is a garage sale, it's so weird. Oh my gosh, it was so successful. People were so grateful and thankful. And then we just moved it to an annual. Jen and, Jen and Jeff Tackney were doing it three times a year. It was unbelievable, okay? The shredding event. Now everybody's done a shredding event, but if you did it one time, you're not. it's not gonna be a big blowout. But if it's part of your event plan, then it's just one more excuse that also touches a different demographic. Electronic waste, junk removal, utility, simple things to do to get a thank you. Obviously, num the next one is charity and fundraising. You know, the, the toy drive, these holidays, these nonprofits supporting local services. This stuff is so amazing for your brand and building relationships, my friends. 
Okay, seasonal holiday fun things, small parties, big parties, big community sponsorships. You guys all know what, what to do there. And then the last thing I want to highlight is these home ownership. I, I'm, there's a term that I'm trying to get all my clients on board with is homeowner educational series. So helping you guys actually do educational events in the community by extending an invite to learn more about things that homeowners would be interested in. Let's go over to the uh, digital marketing and online. Okay. So I'm just going to highlight a few of these real quickly for you guys. And we've got, cause we've got so many more things to cover. Okay. Number one, we've got the Google business profile, which is when someone searches best real estate agent in the community name, the city name, I did some research the other day, my friends, 6,700 people, 6,700 people every single month type in that phrase into Google best real estate agent in blank city name, neighborhood name, 6,700 times. And that is going up. So let's make sure that in our Google business profile, you guys are optimizing that for that search with your geographic farm. Okay. Make sure that you guys are doing Q and a with your geographic farm, doing updates in your geographic farm events for your geographic farm. And of course, extending offers to your geographic farm. We'll talk about that in more depth, but that is free to all of you. And let's get that optimized. Number two in this, where this is a moneymaker is what I refer to as the YouTube SEO strategy. Okay. We've seen in the last two years, since 2020, here to 2023, that the YouTube SEO video strategy is blowing the lights out. So let's make sure that you are all doing a, what's it like living in La Costa Valley, California? What are the pros and cons of living in maybe the city name, right? Best neighborhoods, top five neighborhoods, city name. And then one of those is your neighborhood geographic farm. Those videos perform wildly successful on YouTube. It is the strangest thing that I've seen. Literally, Google conspires on your behalf. Remember, Google owns YouTube. Google conspires on your behalf. You create one of these videos, someone over here is searching Zillow neighborhood name. And then all of a sudden that person goes on YouTube at night on their, on their home screen. And for some strange reason, your video of the pros and cons of living in city name shows up in their feed for free. Yeah. Let's get on that, my friends. Okay. Next is an advertising strategy with YouTube. Okay. So I'm trying to get all my coaching clients to do regular housing market videos. And then we can go into your Google uh, Advertising Council and we can create an in-stream YouTube ad. And so if I can get my, my clients and friends to create a little housing market video about the geographic farm or the city name, whichever is appropriate, you can actually, with Google advertising, you can take your YouTube video which is, you know, kind of anything between two to five minutes and you can set it as an in-stream ad and the cost is unbelievable. I will have more resources in the link for this for you guys. I'm going to load this document up with way more links for resources for you guys to go deeper. So we don't have to do it today. You can, you can come back to this thing and have some fun with this later. Okay. But the cost is literally anywhere, usually between three to five cents per view. So if you spend a hundred bucks, you're getting anywhere between 2000 to, you know, 3000 views geo targeting your zip code and or neighborhood name. Now with Google, you can geo target at the, at the local level on Facebook. You cannot. So my friends, we still need to take advantage of this and do a housing market video where you talk about what's going on in the local market. And oh, by the way, if they click the skip button, you didn't even pay. So if you introduce yourself, hey, it's Patrick, you know, local real estate agent in La Costa Valley, and they hit skip, you didn't even pay for that. That's unbelievable, my friends. Okay. A bunch of you guys are have been working on, you know, what to do with next door. You're running the ads, you're communicating, you're engaging. I think the re, you know, being a resource in that environment is, is a brilliant strategy, meaning a referral source. You need a roofer, you need a painter, you need a gutters guy, you need a drainage guy right now with all this rain. You need a snowplow guy. You need, you need, you need, you need. I got a guy. I got a guy. That's a great way for you guys to in, increase your get engagement. At the low cost pay per click, we all should be running some basic low cost pay per click homes for sale in city name, neighborhood name. And at the very, very low level, we should you know, be capturing some of those leads for very, very low cost. Absolutely want you guys to be working on an email newsletter, right? And this is a big, big hot topic for me and my coaching clients is how do we have an email newsletter that you are 
proud of, that people appreciate you for? And then how would we then extend that to our geographic farm neighbors and friends? Lots, lots to do there. Um, some of you guys may uh, have these great websites. Like I'm a big Sierra Interactive fan just because of the SEO um, setup. It's, it's set up for search engine optimization. But my friends, all of you guys should look at your website providers and can you create a content page for your geographic farm with your all the homes for sale? So if you had a content page on your geographic farm with all the homes for sale, you can share that and you can promote that. And, you know, at the open house, you can promote that. And it says my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully that won't happen for very much longer. All right, let's keep rolling. Obviously, all the social media, the Facebook groups, the hashtags, you know, influencers inside of your community. LinkedIn is very interesting when you look at all the businesses in your local area, connecting with those, looking for referral partners. Okay. We talked a little bit about educational seminars already, so we'll leave that alone. Okay. Number three, and this is where Breakthrough Broker can help you guys out, which is targeting the renters in your geographic farm. For those of you that are in a little bit more of a high-end market, right? Well, the people that are renting the houses in your farm, there's spending a lot of money and they're paying a lot of money. And so they're right there. Obviously, that's the perfect buyer that we would want to target. So you'd want to kind of reverse engineer the absentee owner, right? We're going to market to the absentee owner. And then we would also market to the renter, the buyer that is in the absentee owner's house in the geographic farm. Okay. This episode is sponsored by my favorite property data tool, Property Radar. Most of you have explored Remine in the real estate industry. For a lot of real estate investors have used this, this tool called PropStream. Well, Property Radar is my favorite version of those two tool sets. I think it's fantastic for real estate agents. In today's episode, you're hearing me talk about pulling up maybe the absentee owner list in your geographic farm. That property radar would allow you to do that really easily and give you way more information that you'd ever need to know. I also mentioned that you know you might want to pull every single family for uh, doing a CMA day for them. Property radar would be, allow you to do that and way, way, way more. So there's so many different nuances of searches you can do to create potential seller lists with property radar. There's extensive training on their site. So go down below, jump on the link, test it out, do the training, watch a couple of my videos of some of the different strategies I'm recommending, and let's see if this data tool can make a big difference for you with getting listings in 2023. I look forward to hearing your results or any of your questions. Go down below, jump on the link, we'll see you in there. I just wanna remind you guys, number four is the I have a buyer letter is easily one of the most successful and important uh, strategies since 2020, since we've been in this ridiculous low, low, low inventory and high, high, high buyer demand. All of us need to be better with using the I have a buyer letter campaign, you know, being able to have an offer, an off market um, way of approaching homeowners on behalf of our buyers. Such an important strategy. I've done a lot of content on my YouTube channel on that topic of all the different ways we can do that, but I just don't think we're doing that enough and then not offering it enough at also the open house. So let's talk about open house for a second here, <laughs> right? When you offer the off-market opportunities at an open house, there's a percentage of the buyers who are in the market now ready to find the right home. Those buyers are going to be very attracted to the off-market opportunity offer that you would extend. I have a great coaching client in the Bay Area, one of the most you know difficult markets in the country to sell homes. And last year, he, can, he closed eight transactions from the work that we did on the open house. And a lot of that was extending the offer of, hey, has anyone taken the time to review with you all of the off-market opportunities? And they're like, well, no, what are those? Now, if I'm brand new buyer into the market, that is, I, that has, I don't care. But if you're someone who's looking for that, that perfect home, oh my gosh, you're like, tell me more, okay? So let's keep rolling. In the open house, my friends, we must invite the neighbors in your geographic farm. You've got to have a neighbor's welcome and invite the neighbors. This is for my top listing agents. This is the one highly productive activity when we talk about open houses in your geographic farm is get all the neighbors over and start meeting them and talking to them and spending more time with them. I've met so many great neighbors in the farm and that just built such great re relationships and led to so many amazing opportunities. So the problem with that is we don't have a plan going in and we don't have a strategy set up in advance. 
right? And this is where a breakthrough broker can really make a difference for you guys. It's kind of having these pre-templated uh, systems set up. So, you know, when we're running as fast as we can to try and close more deals, stressed out of our minds, right? We need those pre-templated strategies to be able to run and execute quickly and efficiently. Okay. Let's roll to the next strategy, which is just networking. I think, you know, many, many real estate agents have built an entire business on networking in their geographic farm territories and neighborhoods or towns or cities. So just we got to remember that there's so many more opportunities for you guys to go spend time and connect with fellow owners in the community and have conversations with them, up, up, not about real estate. Okay. At the doors. My favorite at the door script is the Andy C script. So I'm going to have a link to the video and it's, it's so brilliant. It's so easy. I do not like doing door knocking, but I would, I've done the Andy C script because it's so low pressure, so easy to do. Okay. There's tons and tons of opportunities at the door over the phone. We've got all the opportunities. I love ringless voicemails in the slide broadcast uh, over the phone in our geographic farms, right? And we've got all those other immediate sources of business to get after. And then of course, my friends, right? Where everybody is, is in direct mail, okay? So one of the advanced strategies I recommend is, you know, when you pull your list with your geographic farm, can we go owner-occupied, absentee owners, and then the renters? So we, we can actually target three different groups. So as we're... After you're profitable in your farm, you're making money. We've got some, you know, just we've got some good, easy, low cost things happening, right? So, you know, we all know that with the EDDM, right, with a, a low cost direct mail campaign from Breakthrough Broker, we can get in front of the geographic farm at the lowest possible cost. Okay. Then as you start to create more profit, then we might want to go targeting. So there's usually a step process in there. So for my friends who want to go from maybe three to five to 10% of their geographic farm, and you want to move to 15 to 20% of the geographic farm, targeting becomes really critical. The high probability sellers, this is where, you know, it's worth taking two seconds here, which is we all know that depending on what's going on with the culture and the demographics in your geographic farm, there may be either a trade up seller, a retiring seller, or a super senior seller. And so trying to identify those in your geographic farm and maybe creating a specific campaign for them, again, at the advanced level, that's a great strategy to increase your market share. Okay. Um, we all know direct mail, the old expires cancel withdrawn. I don't know if you guys have seen the, you know, print out a Zillow Zestimate with a sticky note. That's a really fun strategy, you know, kind of doing maybe five of those a day or doing one of those a day for a geographic farm and getting that off to people. I was listening to a great session that Eric was doing on the CMA a day strategy. So creating a CMA for your geographic farm, just a nice, general, simple, easy one and sending that off to people and inviting them into a conversation as a great conversation starter, right? So there's a million things we can be doing in the, you know, in the, the direct mail thing. You know, the QR codes have finally achieved adoption. So it is, you know, the QR codes, it's on my friend. So how are we going to leverage the QR code? I think HomeBot has been doing a great, you know, providing a great service. You know, I think the, you know, so offering the HomeBot, offering the opportunity to follow the unique value of their home, and then maybe doing a QR code to a little video that you said, hey, to my neighbors, my friends, this is a great tool. Let me explain what it is, how it works and go down below and get yourself signed up and you'll receive the next one for free. I hope you enjoy it, right? The QR code right now is such a great way for us to, um, you know, to get in front of our clients digitally leveraging direct mail. Okay. So you can see, I just kind of put a bunch of notes for all my coaching clients, you know, down, you know, creating the just list, just sold campaign. And then of course, you know, seasonal quarterly, you know, what are we going to do there? And then traditional advertising. So my friends, wow, look at that. Hey, one more thing before you go, if you haven't signed up for my email newsletter, drop down below and just click the link that says email newsletter and I'll send you the next one. I only send it out maybe one to three times a month max. I write it myself and I'm only putting in some of the best ideas, strategies, books, podcasts, blogs, articles, you know, my latest interviews, anything that I think is going to make a positive impact on you and your business, I'll put it in there. So I don't send it out very often. I wait until I have something worth sending. I hope you enjoy it. It's easy to unsubscribe. If you don't like it, no worries. All right, drop down below and get after it. And then, you know, respond to the email. If there's anything I can do to help, I take a look at those emails and I will respond to you. All right, have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.